Hello, what's up? It is April 19th, very late at night, and as you can see behind me here, I have a rather large box. If you have been paying attention to my Instagram, you will know that uh, today I have some pretty exciting new uh, goalie pads that I am going to be live unboxing. So, and yes, they are the CCM eFlex 3s. So, now that I've started the live stream, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to post on Instagram really quick that uh, that everyone needs to come look. Um, actually, for that matter, can I just do like a live Instagram thing? I don't even know how to do that. I haven't done that yet. I don't know how that works. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, let's give everyone a little bit since uh, it's going to take a few people, I'm sure, a little bit of time to come in here. And then um, I'm sure some of you guys are like watching the uh, the games right now. So uh, so you guys are going to have to keep me up on what's going on with the games because I don't have them on because I don't want to accidentally have the audio on like I did that one time. All right, swipe left and hit, hit, and hit live on Instagram. All right, live. There we go. Nice. All right. I am it's checking connection now. 3 2 1. All right. So apparently I'm live on not only Instagram. This is like goaleception here. I don't know if I should do this. I don't know if I have any weird tabs up or anything. Let me look. Uh yeah, I don't think I even think too weird. So, um okay. So, it's like goaleception here. I got the live stream going on and you can see both of you guys can see on YouTube and on Instagram. I got uh I got those new eFlex 3s back there. So uh, I'm not going to do a live Instagram for that long. This is just to show everyone that I'm doing the uh, the YouTube live stream right now. So make sure you're going over to uh, youtube.com forward slash goalie crease net. And uh, holy wahoo, like there are a ton of people on Instagram right now. And there's even more people on YouTube now. So we're up to like 60 on YouTube and 44 on uh, on Instagram. Maybe I need to do this Instagram live thing more often. Uh, but it doesn't like save. Like I, I can't save it on YouTube, and I like I like everything saved on YouTube perfectly. So so anyway, again, this is kind of goaleception. And uh, so all of you guys who are on Instagram right now, make sure you're coming over to uh, the Goalie Crease Net channel on YouTube. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. I'll let uh, you know. I've been staring at this box for like four hours or five hours now so you can only imagine how uh, how crazy I am like I want to open them up now so anyway Instagram followers all 35 of you right now make sure you're going over to goalycrease.net because the live stream has started already I have not unboxed them yet so anyway head on over see you there all right in live video 65 viewers nice all right well that's my first uh, Instagram live as you guys know uh, the Instagram uh, is a pretty new channel for me. So uh, normally I've done, you know, obviously YouTube. That's the most famous. And then uh, I have a Twitter. I don't do it that often uh, for goalies. Um, like who's on Twitter nowadays? Um, and then obviously the Facebook group. So if you guys aren't part of the Facebook group yet, make sure you do soon. I think we're up to like a thousand followers now on there. So that's pretty cool. Let me check really quick. Um, the group almost a thousand so yeah make sure you go to uh, to Facebook Goalie Crease Network group is what it's called and uh, go on there and then I will uh, I'll approve you right away and then you can uh, you can talk to me talk to everyone else who's uh, part of the Goalie Crease Network and it's a fun and welcoming place where you can come and you know get get help get tips and stuff like that so and look at some cool gear at the same time so anyway uh yeah you guys ready yet what, okay so what what team am i cheering for the playoffs i don't know i'm i don't know i'm not quite sure i just watch all the games i kind of really want edmonton to do really well just because i really like their team and i like talbot uh but if you guys have been watching me on instagram lately you'll know that like i think he needs a new set he needs to have some more orange like that that little tiny bit of orange on there is not good enough. Uh, and Nicholas, just got your uh, just got your thing. So I'll uh, I will definitely accept you here in a little bit. 
that must be you so anyway okay so let's go ahead and get started and then um, for any of you guys who are watching like afterwards uh, if you have any more questions just post them down below I'll be more than happy to uh, to answer any questions you guys might have so let's go ahead and get started all right so I'm gonna get the uh, the chair out of the way I guess I probably should have moved it in the first place eh? Uh oh don't drop a knife all right so obviously it's going to be like a little bit difficult for me to like read very tiny on there that uh, what questions you guys might have so I'm just gonna kind of walk through the pads a little bit and then if you guys have uh, any questions let me know um, and I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can so uh, as I cut here and I cut very carefully uh, these are not 35 plus 2 which is my regular size I went ahead and went with 35 plus 1 this time because I wanted to reduce size a little bit um, and uh, the main reason for that is because I wanted agility back especially since I've lost a ton of weight as you guys know I've maybe put a little bit back but I've lost quite a bit of weight and so uh, I wanted to make sure that um, you know that I can be more agile and I don't need to rely on my positioning as much so oh these are beautiful now who remembers what colors they are these are and I guess you guys can already see so that's kind of cheating all right so let's let's get into it all right we got the glove here beautiful oh look at that yeah, and it comes nicely uh, nicely closed for you so you can see what it's gonna be like and man I really like that speed skin that is a cool material now if you guys aren't aware the uh, the new uh, CCM eFlex 3s they feature the speed skin material and it's pretty cool it's like a, a micro material and so what it's supposed to do is reduce the friction uh, that you get on the ice and I can already tell like that is a pretty cool material that's not going to uh, now of course on a glove it's not like you're sliding on your glove so that's not that big of a deal but on the pads it's gonna be pretty cool and I can't wait to, to show you guys that so go ahead and open this up oh nice I'm surprised too like I'm hopefully you guys can see this the CCM logo on there it's like in the material it's actually like embossed in the material and so it's not like a uh, it's not sewn and it's not uh, like the applique or the the heat applique and so it looks really nice that's pretty cool that's interesting now you still have the uh, the really nice uh, uh, embroidery right there and you also have really nice CCM embroidery right there so it looks really nice and then I can already see it here that little tag which means D3O you guys can see that D3O so if you guys remember back to my premiere review I really like that uh, the D3O foam that they put in it that's pretty cool all right let's check it out here this is a 590 brake so yes Tony and you know I like that 590 brake now if you if you're buying from the store it's probably going to be a 600 brake that's what their uh, their default is or their stock option uh, but yes I went ahead and, and still got the 590 brake since that's what I'm used to um, especially from stick handling now you guys remember back on that uh, the glove comparison video I've tried all three of the brakes uh, that CCM uh, offers and all of them have their own merits so make sure to check out that video if you don't know which one you want to go with the 580 590 or 600 um, but I prefer the 590 um, especially from a stick handling standpoint I'm just used to it the 600 is perfectly good um, I do recommend that one too if you're if you're used to it and I think most goalies probably like the 600 so that's probably why they're switching that to the the stock option so a little difference here you can see I went with the double T this time you guys know that I normally hate what the double T looks like uh, but I've seen so many pros go into the double T and the double T is also their stock option this year so I really wanted to try it because hey you figure if all the pros are going to to the double T why am I not trying it so even if I don't really love the way it looks 
um, I get what the merits are. And the main merit of it, of course, is that you can see the puck when it's in the mitt. So if, you know, if you're catching the puck, obviously you can see straight in there and see that it's happening. If you're a fingers up goalie or if you're catching it right in front of your face, otherwise it's very difficult to see that puck in there. And now you can see the puck. And so just to kind of show you really quick, I think this is a game puck that I, uh, I won. So anyway, it goes in there and now you can see it easily in there from the side and the back. And actually for that matter, check this out. That's beautiful. I think maybe the glove could use a little breaking in from an opening standpoint, since obviously it's been in a box like this for God knows how long. But uh, but once it breaks in and gets all the way out, you can see just how big that is. That's really nice. That's awesome. Man, I'm really looking forward to that material. That looks beautiful. All right, so cool. All right, I'm trying to think here. You got obvious D3O foam right here. And I really like this groove um, that, uh, now I'm not sure if maybe they originated with the Reebok and the CCM line or maybe back with the Cohos. I remember maybe my Cohos having this little divot. Um, but I really like that too because it's very easy to put your, uh, your stick into. Obviously your stick's not going to go the whole length, uh, but it kind of makes this nice little divot right here where your glove kind of fits into. Um, and that way you have extra control with your stick handling. So I really like that. Got my name on there, embroidered, beautiful. Beautiful back. There's some gloves out there that look terrible from the back. I think maybe I've pointed that out a few times. Uh, but nonetheless, I've always liked the uh, the back of the CCM. It's it's very nice, very aesthetically pleasing. Let's open it up so you guys can see what's inside. All right, there we go. So you can see there. We got plenty of straps in there. And sorry, I'm looking that direction because I got another screen, so I can see what I'm actually looking at. So you got your wrist strap down below as normal, plus with your quick release strap that's up here. Normally I don't use that, but maybe I'll try it. It looks like maybe the connection is a little bit different uh, than what I'm used to. Maybe I'll, uh, you can see here it's a game ready. That's what I prefer. I don't really like the pro or the, especially not the practice, but I'm not really a huge fan of the pro either. Uh, you can see the back of the, uh, the hand here. That's nice. Looks like it's that speed skin material too. That's kind of interesting that they put it on here too. And then obviously you have another one for the fingers and there's nothing above that. I know some gloves end up having like a little elastic up there, but this one doesn't have that, which is fine. And then obviously your, uh, your pinky strapping over there. So for those of you who, uh, who so I've had a few questions here on like how I strap this backing. What I typically do after you break in your glove, you want to close it and then you want to start strapping things. And I just do it, you know, not too tight. You don't want to cut up circulation or hinder movement or anything like that. So now that I have that, I'll go ahead and put this back on. We'll try the, the quick release. We'll put this back on. We'll put this back on. There we go. And then, let's see how this does. Yeah, that's nicely tight. So you can see there, nicely tight. And now you have your quick release. That's nice. Oh, look at that. You can even hear it. Beautiful. Just needs a little breaking in to go this way. So I think maybe overnight tonight, um, if you guys watch my break-in method, I don't think I'm actually going to do the whole method on this um, because it already closes really easily. And it clo I mean, that's a beautiful closure right there. That is perfectly sealed. You can see right there, absolutely perfectly sealed. And so I don't want to mess with that too much, but obviously it's not opening all the way since it's been in a box for a long time. So I might go ahead and just like stick a weight or something on it this way so that it opens up fully. And I'll probably just do that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let me see if, uh, if there's any questions about the glove really quick. Um, I don't know how long shipping was. Um, in fact, they actually told me this week that it was going to be shipped this week. And so I figured I was going to get it next week. And uh, then it came today. And that was like two days ago when they told me that. So um, so shipping was a little bit different. Um, let's see here. 
And today, honestly, I'm going to stick to talking about the E-Flex 3s. So I know you guys are going to have questions about other things, and um, typically there's a lot of the same questions that are on every video, but I'll do another live stream uh, maybe this weekend or next week or something like that and get the rest of your questions. But um, let's stick to uh, the CCM ones today, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> yes, this is a 590. How light is it? That's a good question. I wish I could really like give you like a real response, but in comparison to the premieres, they don't feel any lighter or heavier. That's about the same as the premiere. I, at least I don't feel a difference. And I don't have the premieres here, so I'm not entirely sure. But uh, the main difference between this and the premiere uh, that I can see already is uh, the speed skin. Uh, the rest of it looks uh, very similar. I'm sure there's some other differences that I'm going to have to uh, to read through. I got a little guide that I can kind of read. Um, but uh, but this speed skin material is really cool. And it's like, it's interestingly soft to the touch. So it's not like that sort of, uh, that grainy leather feel. This is definitely like a, and it's not, uh, maybe it's closer to like a carbon fiber feel. But, uh, but you can tell it's like one of those sort of microfiber uh, materials. That's pretty cool. I really, really look forward to getting this on the ice because if I can feel like how slippery this is right here, I can't even imagine how much I'm going to fly across that ice the first time I, I go, so it's going to be fun. So does it feel uh, different compared to the E-Flux 2? Let's compare. Now, of course, this one is very well worn. Let me take this one off. I can tell, like, this feels a lot like the Premier. Let me put this on now and feel it. And some of the difference, of course, is going to be because this is just so well broken in. So, you can see there. Get a nice closure, but one of the interesting things, so if I close this glove, here, let me open this one, and then I'll close the other one. So this one, you can tell there's quite a bit of material up here. It has a nice, very large pocket. And then when I close this one, see how much smaller that material is there, the pocket? It looks, and I don't know if you're going to be able to tell on camera. And of course it looks kind of funny, because like I'm trying to like, geometry doesn't work here. So, but if I had a good way of showing you, it looks like the lengths are a little bit different. It may be like maybe a half an inch or something like that, but that's just more room for, uh, you know, the puck in the pocket. Because look at this pocket right there compared to this one. You can, you can see there's, there's a little bit of a difference there, especially because this is the double T. So I kind of like that. And that end, uh, getting the puck back out, the puck in here, you can see, it's just, I mean, I could fit, you know, three or four pucks in there. In fact, let's see, I got four pucks. Let's see if I can fit four in here. Ah, uh, maybe not. Maybe three. Yeah, three pucks. Uh, there's probably maybe room for a fourth once it breaks in. And now let me compare that to the E-Flex 2s. Again, this glove is very well broken in, obviously, but one puck, well, that's kind of sliding down a little bit, two pucks, three, no, not really, so really, this one fits about two pucks, I might be able to fit a third one in there if I really jammed, but if I really jammed, I'd be able to fit four in the other one, so, so overall, I think the, uh, the E-Flex 2 uh, ends up fitting basically a whole other puck in there. And it might be because of that double T. I'm not entirely sure yet. But that's fun. All right. Well, that's exciting. Cool. All right. Any other questions here? How come you did not go with the skate lace? I think it's ugly. Um, that, that's really about it. Um, I mean, I always figure, like, it's easier for me to get a hold of uh, skate lace and relace a glove. Uh, rather than trying to get a hold of a lot of nylon string and then try to relace it that way. So um, that's just what I always figure. Um, how is the back of the finger protection on the E3 
gloves. So you got this portion right here. And let's compare that really quick. So it's very similar to the E-Flex 2. So you got that little protection right there. Let me see if I can like balance it. There we go. And then you got a little padding in here. And it, this looks like it maybe has a little more padding. So I wonder if that's maybe the D3O foam in there again. I don't know if maybe this thing will tell me. No, it just tells me a little bit about the D3O. But this one looks pretty similar. So, and I always like that. I don't really like a lot of the back of the hand protection. I generally don't need it. Um, and so I just think it's kind of a waste of, uh, of weight, honestly, in most instances. But uh, it looks like there's maybe a little more foam in this one, maybe D3O foam compared to uh, the old E-Flex 2. So you can see that there. Looks really nice. And this is also in the speed skin material. So that's pretty cool. I right, see if there's any other differences just off the off the top of my head or looking here. I'll kind of let you guys see too. I don't really see too many other at least differences in the back, and I'm totally okay with that because I like the back of uh, CCM and Reebok uh, gloves. They tend to look really nice. Cool. All right, what else we got here? We got that uh, that dry material. So if you guys can see inside there, if I angle it down a little bit, you can see that uh, really soft uh, material that uh, it tends to get really dry and uh, a little bit sticky in there. So it's kind of nice as opposed to like really uh, uh, either slippery or cracky uh, like a lot of leather when it gets uh, when it gets taken out. So cool. All right, we got the blocker next. Let's put that over there. Ah, uh, blocker, look at that. Now I know a lot of people say a blocker's a blocker, and that's just simply not true. And maybe I've probably said that too. I don't know, but I still don't think it's true. Because there's actually a lot that goes into a blocker, and um, especially when it comes to the weight. So, um, when I'm doing my blocker reviews, I always like to show you guys like the weight um, and the balance of it. Cool. This is all uh, the speed skin material. I didn't get any of uh, that regular material you would have uh, seen otherwise. Um, you know, like the regular like leather uh, or even the emboss. Um, so this is a pretty cool material. So let me open this up here a little bit for you. A lot of you guys know I like to keep my wrist strap really loose. In fact, I generally take out this string right here, too. Let's put this hand in here. Nice. Nicely flexible already. You can kind of see that. And then uh, let me get around here so you guys can see. Nicely flexible in the wrist. I might not even have to take that out. I did take it out for the other one, though. So I might still. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let's try that, that balance test I was just talking about. Yeah. So it goes right back to center. Even if I try to go out like that, it actually goes straight back to center. If I go this way, no, yeah, just kind of the centers. So very nicely balanced. Pretty cool. Lots of finger protection. And of course, I pointed this out on the uh, premieres too. I really like the addition of that D3O foam right here so you can see there's this uh, orange padding right here so that's D3O foam and uh, here, let me read this little thing for you guys so D3O foam uh, it's soft and flexible which you guys can see here I can actually kind of squish it and yet upon impact um, it locks on shock and then it returns to the flexible state so it's one of those materials where once it gets hit it kind of locks up and it really protects you um, but it remains flexible uh, when it's not uh, being on impact or when it is impacted. Um, and that way it's still flexible and you can get whatever, um, you know, movement you need out of it. So that's really nice. I also like uh, on the CCM blockers, not only uh, this material, which you, uh, you just saw in the glove, um, which keeps it nicely dry, 
and then also like a it's not really maybe sticky is the wrong word but what it does is just it's a nice little grip um, but I really like you know all of this material up here that keeps your hand really really dry um, and nicely uh, nicely aired you can see a nice little air bladder right there nice protection on the uh, the thumb beautiful and of course the sidewall which the sidewall is completely flat you can see uh, right there beautifully flat and then of course I got binding lists um, now that you can get binding lists I don't know why so many NHLers are still going with the uh, the binding on the blocker I think it looks terribly ugly so this uh, binding list blocker looks beautiful I love that I'm so excited to have a white and red uh, set again. I've been uh, rocking the blues for a while. So having this red set is going to be really nice. I can also see this padding here is a, maybe a little bit thicker than I'm used to. I wonder if that might be D3O foam in there, but it's maybe a little bit too hard for that. I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on there. But you can see the, uh, let me take that out here. The D3O tag right there. Pretty cool. And of course, name. The CCM logo on here, again, is that really nicely embossed. So I can probably show you to a little bit on the side and you can see it's nicely embossed. And so it's not uh, it's not like embroidered and it's not like the uh, the old the old way of doing it. Uh, which you could remove it if you really wanted to, but it kind of looked funny. I had actually done it before. And then nicely embroidered up here. And nicely embroidered over there. That's pretty cool. All right, any questions about the blocker? So let's see here. Does inside protection get in the way of holding a stick? No. Um, in fact, let me show you. All right, so. Now, of course, this is a brand new blocker, and so it's uh, it's a little stiff, but it's not bad. And so I don't think I'm going to have any problems. Now, I hold my stick like this, for those of you who, uh, who are counting. So you can see I grip with my index, and then I have my middle finger kind of riding down a little bit. There's some goalies who might do two or one or just kind of uh, one like that. Do For you goalies who are out there, do not do this like with the, the one finger like on the paddle you need to be gripping that paddle so a little tip there so that's how I do it and I can already tell like this is gonna be really nice this is barely gonna need any breaking in and for that matter you can kinda see I'm gonna see if I can show you here in the past I've often tried to move this pad up a little bit and a little bit out of the way you can see it's not even touching the stick there so that's not that's not a problem in protection because any puck that's going to ride here is still going to hit that protection um, but now it's nicely and safely out of the way of my stick so I don't have to break in or move that pad so that's really nice that's cool nicely agile I'm really looking forward to using this beautiful that's cool all right awesome all right any more questions about the blocker how light does the blocker feel? That's a that's another difficult one. It's kind of like watching a food show, you know, where it's like, you know, how do I show you like how something like how it weighs? You know, it's a little difficult. I don't have a, a scale here, but feeling it. Let me feel this, and let me go to the Eplex too. And I can kind of show you guys. It's probably about the same. Somewhere around there. I, of course, this one's like way more uh, agile just because I've been using it and I've removed that string. So eventually this one will, will feel like that one. But really, it's about the same. I don't really feel much of a difference in terms of weight. Now let's look over here to see if there's any like noticeable, like clear difference. And I'm not really seeing anything huge. 
so far looks like all approximately the same construction just probably some differences in D3O foam obviously in the materials because this is the uh, the old material and this is the speed spin <clears throat> and so just trying to take a quick look around let you guys see that too looks pretty well the same just general construction wise now of course the old uh, the E-Flex 2 did not have that D3O foam in there so the Premier's did the old E-Flex 2's didn't so I really like the addition of that that's that extra finger protection and then just kinda looking over it I'm not seeing a huge amount of difference otherwise you can kinda look at the sidewalls too so, so yeah pretty cool awesome all right let's see if there's any why shouldn't we why shouldn't we have our index on the paddle so here's uh let me show you why i'll show you without now here so here's how i hold my stick like that you have very nice control over the entire thing now if i take that finger and i put it up here and i get a shot right here what happens this happens because this is not going to be very stable and the same thing if you know somebody comes past your crease and your stick gets hit oops so that's not very stable at all this finger is not doing anything in that case so you want to make sure that you're gripping so that if anything happens to this stick you're able to still control it so when you're you know looking at your new blockers in the store um, make sure that you're you know you have a good grip on it and you're doing what you're gonna do in the game which should be something approximate to this now, of course, you have different grips on sticks and whatnot, so what you guys do might be a little bit different, but with a typical or traditional grip, that's what you'll do. All right, let's see here. Um, I have not had any problems with a bindingless blocker getting um, uh, anywhere any faster. In fact, if I look at if I look at the E-Flex 2, you guys know I've been using this for, what, two years now? and there is barely any wear. Let's see some blocker punching demos. That's a good one. Yeah, I should I should definitely do that. Um, let's see here. Does the blocker have uh, good protection without getting in the way? So yes, absolutely. Yeah, I didn't have to move anything and you can tell uh, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, let's see here. <laughs> is there D3O foam in the finger protection? Yes. So yes, it does. Um, and no, you won't. You won't crush your finger in the paddle down. Um, you really won't. Trust me. I do it all the time. Um, okay. Cool. I don't see anything. Uh, any other like outstanding questions? Curved finger protection versus straight. I don't know. I mean. Either way, honestly, I think it's it's fine. Like I haven't had any, I haven't had a puck hit a finger in years, and that's probably because I've been using CCM blockers for the vast majority of the time. Um, of course, I I've used other brands too. I don't think I've gotten hit on the finger for any of those either. So, I mean, more than anything, it's gonna be, you know, basically how good you are and, and the kinds of shots that you're seeing. So, um, cool, awesome. All right, you guys want to move on to the uh, the goalie pads or the leg pads, because I'm sure that that's what you guys really want to see. So let's put this back. Oh, I'm looking forward to that material. You guys have no idea how difficult it has been to look at this box for five hours and want to see these pads so badly. So, and now that I have the pads, and of course I've been, I actually had two opportunities to play tonight and I had to turn them down because I wanted to do the live stream. So, uh, but I am so looking forward to using these pads on the ice. I can't even tell you how excited I am, especially because of that speed skin material. Oh wow, like I can't wait to slide on this. All right, all right, let's get going. Oh, look at that, beautiful. That is incredible, look at that. bring it up for you guys so I can show you guys the the whole design 
And I went with uh, the white and red, obviously, because I like that that color scheme too, and I often play for teams with that color scheme. And so I like to have a little differentiation. Got the uh, the navy and the light blue already, and so now I got the red and the white. But man, I don't know if I can go back to the uh, the other set now, because look at these pads; these are beautiful. And man, that that speed skin material is incredible. They've also changed the material this year um, on the straps. And so um, I'll get to that in a second, but that's something I want to point out to you guys. Cool. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I see some hilarious comments that I can't even I can't even tell you guys. But like I said before, uh, these are 35 plus 1. And so... Uh, the reason I did that, normally I go with 35 plus 2 for all of you guys who, uh, who notice or who have asked me in the past. And uh, the reason I've gone with uh, 35 plus 1 is because I wanted to increase my agility. I'm more than willing to give up a little 5-hole um, uh, coverage there because, I mean, you guys have seen me. I mean, I'm 5'11 on a good day, and so I don't need 35 plus 2 pads, and it's a lot of overlap. So um, I think with a 35 plus 1, I'm going to save a little bit of weight. Um, but I'm going to increase my agility quite a bit. So that's what I really want to do. They are really, really light. Like, surprisingly light. I remember I remember getting my E-Flex 2s and thinking that they were light. And then I got my Premiers and I thought that they were a little bit heavier, if you remember. Uh, back to, uh, to those. And that might be because the Premiers were sized a little bit differently. And so for those of you guys, I actually talked to, uh, to CCM specifically about that issue. And uh, the main thing about that is that the Premier line has that different boot um, that is a much more uh, uh, a stiffer boot, and so it rides high. And so that was the main uh, difficulty that I had, is that I had ordered 35 plus 2, and they really felt like they were more like 36 plus 2. Um, so... I was really looking forward to these, and I, um, I asked them, you know, is the sizing of the E-Flex 3s the same as the E-Flex 2s? And they said yes. So um, for all of you guys who maybe were considering premieres or if you're in premieres, um, you just need to size it the same as your E-Flex 2s if you had those. Um, if you do have premieres and you're going to go with these, um, basically what you're going to want to do is um, uh, subtract, you know, one inch from your, uh, your knee measurement. So anyway, now... Look at this. This also has that speed skin material, and you can you might even be able to hear it. It's kind of like a. Uh, it reminds me of like maybe. Like, don't quote me on this, but it feels like a like a sort of micro vinyl sort of feel. So it's uh it's like a little bit of a rubbery plastic feel, but you can tell in rubbing your hand over it that it just wants to slide and so this is a pretty cool material to put on the inside gusset of the pads because this obviously is what you're going to be sliding on when you're out there and so this stuff I mean I remember the first time I'm pretty sure it was with the E-Flex 2's that I got out there and I went to, uh, uh, to butterfly slide and I just like it was a fresh set of ice, and I slid for like 12 feet. And when I got to Premier's, it did the same thing. So the Premier's slid really well. I mean, I'm probably going to slide like 20 feet on these things. Like, you can tell. I mean, this stuff was made for sliding. That's pretty cool. So I'm really excited about that. Now. All right, cool. One more time for the front. I'll get the other ones out here, too, just so you can see it in a second. You can see the, uh, the side here. Now this is your more traditional material on the outside. Uh, you have nice embroidery, nice embroidery down here for the name. This is also speed skin. And then uh, you have your, your CCM right there. That's also in the speed skin material. So that's kind of funny. Nice. All right, you wanna get to the back of the pad? All right, let's go with the uh, the straps first. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna show you guys the straps. Because the straps are a different material this year. 
or at least they have the option for a different material so I don't know how well this is gonna come through on the camera but this is definitely way different than what you're used to this is not leather at all and this is not you know like your webbing material and so let me see if I can kind of hold it up so you guys can see I don't know if you guys can really see like any difference but it's like it's definitely like a sort of like plastic but it seems really strong and nicely flexible so I'm interested to see um, it's extremely light too so like your leather straps um, I know that a lot of you guys have um, you know reconsidered leather straps um, and have been going with like you know like basically your nylon or um, like a webbing strap but these are clearly lighter than even those in my opinion at least so those are gonna be interesting to use I'm kind of excited about these like you don't really think of like innovation being something with like strap material you know but this is very different than what you're used to seeing so this will be pretty cool to use of course the only difficulty that I have is finding out like which hole does it need to uh, to be at um, so it's gonna take me a few ice times maybe anyway I'm really excited about that and you can tell well I don't know if you can tell but uh, the uh, the strap connections are the same material so it has to be really strong so that's pretty cool I wish I had the guide in front of me so I could just kind of like walk through that a little bit with you guys but that's all right the other thing I did over here is that I did go ahead and get the adjustable or the uh, the one that's removable and so I know that uh, that was an option with the premieres uh, but I didn't know it at the time and so uh, you can actually remove this bootstrap and so I can remove it out out of there and I can remove it from here and then you don't have a bootstrap so uh, they have a few different boot connection uh, points that you can do so that's pretty cool I like it and then just to kind of show you guys I did get different strapping on the back that I'm used to too so if I remember correctly the one that I that I got is their stock option if I'm remembering correctly and so you can see um, I have this below the knee a single below knee and then I have uh, the one that is up here and then nothing so that's way different than I'm used to so I'm really excited about that obviously we have the elastic so it's not I guess it's not nothing but it's the elastic I have the elastic up here too and then you have your bootstrap which you can use or not use up to you and then up here so you guys know that especially with the premier pads well with all the pads but especially with the premieres I had intentionally gotten um, the uh, the knee area uh, with the padding on it and that way I could remove it and show you guys how I do that you don't have to do that anymore in fact you didn't have to do it with the premieres but uh, but now it's really nice because this is that uh, that nylon material on the back and so this is going to be very uh, slippery for your knee guards um, especially if you have big bulky knee guards like I like to use uh, this is a great landing area and I like this little pad that's over here so all this area now is for those huge knee guards and then this will allow it to uh, rotate uh, really quickly so that's pretty cool just to be able to show you guys the back a little bit more open those up cool there's the boot I'll kind of open that up so you guys can see the different straps here got a nice soft material right here it's gonna be comfortable you have your uh, different connection points right there this is kind of interesting I don't remember seeing that on a, a previous pad the way that that connects might have to compare that to the uh, the eflex twos no they connected completely differently on the eflex twos I wish I had like a better way to show you guys because like stacking 
stacking pads on here is not going to do it justice. But maybe I'll try. Of course, now I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. So let me know if you guys can't hear me. So you can see the differences in the straps that I had before. So I had this middle one right here along with the single knee, the one above. This one's now gone. Here's the bootstrap. This is not removable. So now I have a removable one. Okay, cool, loud and, loud and clear. Thank you, Brian. Had the, uh, the elastic. And this is sort of that Nash material. That was really soft, and so this material is different. But I really like that. Like this is a little slippery. This is a little, uh, this is a little softer. But those are two different uh, uh, internals. So I was expecting that to be a little bit different. And then just to kind of show you guys, the connection point for this right here goes through this outside pad. And then like I showed you guys, if I can kind of show you, there's the two connection points in there. And on the E-Flex 2s, none of that at all. So this is on the outside of this pad right here. So now it comes through, so it nicely wraps around. And then uh, it doesn't have, you know, that double connection point that's on the inside there. So uh, it kind of only sort of encapsulated your uh, your leg. But now it's really, you know, sort of taking the, uh, the whole pad and uh, making it part of your leg. So that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not really sure because of the differences in the pads, if you can really, you know, accurately compare the two. I mean, there's gonna be your your similarities. Of course, you can see the uh, the size of the, the landing gear and the, the inside gusset all looks approximately the same. And it looks like the top, the top, sorry, the top is largely the same, the boot, uh, construction looks largely the same. Now, of course, here's the E-Flex 2s, nicely broken in. And let's do the same test with the E-Flex 3s. A little stiffer, a little stiff, but look at that. I can eventually do it. So I knew there was a reason I've been working out. So especially in the top, really nicely flexible. I really like that. Uh, the boot. Oh yeah, see there you go. Nicely flexible in the boot. So if you remember back to uh, the premieres, those things, like I was struggling to try to get those things to uh, to flex. Um, but you don't have to do that with the, the Extreme Flex 3 line, which makes a lot of sense considering it's called the E-Flex 3, right? Cool, awesome. All right, just because we can, let's take out the other ones. World's biggest box. Kids will love that. It was pretty funny earlier when someone was like, oh, you got a fridge. I wish I got a fridge in addition to my goalie pads. But no. But uh, I wish I could really show you just like how cool that material is. You might be able to kind of see like just in how it gleams. But uh, well, maybe if I get really close maybe you can kind of, oh there we go all right so check out hopefully you have good enough uh bandwidth and resolution to be able to see the stripes and the pads and you can see just how uh how interesting that is and you can tell like it's made to be slippery that just goes right off that's pretty cool. All right, you also have that same material right here so that anything that may touch the ice uh, and and down here too, anything that may touch the ice uh, will have that material on it. You can see the uh, this little area does too. So when, when you go flat on your knee, it makes that nice, uh, that nice flat edge and you will slip around like you're a dolphin. That's pretty cool. 
Awesome. Beautiful. All right, let's see if there's any other uh, questions. Okay, so how does the material in the leg channel compare to the twos? That's a good question, and I know they have different materials uh, for both. And so, um, so I know there may be some differences just in the options that I chose. But just to kind of give you a sense, this, this is a Nash material in here. And so it's very soft, supple, just like you'd expect from a Nash material. And it's a little pillowy. But in the E-Flex 3s, you kind of have open this up so you guys can actually see it you have like that same softness but the material is more slippery so if you remember the Nash material is not really sticky but it's grippy it's very easy to grip onto um, and so if you um, if you like that more traditional feel like of the the e flex twos or e flex ones um, like an older style pad that has like that nice like pillowy cushiony feel um, you might like that um, but uh, this will allow for better rotation. So even though this might not be as pillowy, um, you can still sell, you can still tell that there's quite a bit of softness there. And then uh, it's very slippery, so you're going to get that extra rotation. So, um, and then this material right here, that nylon material, all throughout, that's going to allow for a ton of uh, uh, rotation too. Now this, of course, still has that like sure grit material. Um, so that way you stick on the pad when you go uh, into your butterfly because you don't want to slip off, of course. Uh, so I'm okay with that material being there. Um, but it's nice that the rest of it really allows you to, uh, uh, to nicely rotate. That's pretty cool. Now it looks like too, if I wanted to, I can actually remove uh, this little band right here and that would make it a little more, uh, a little more flippy for those of you who like that. I think, in fact, I did remove that when I had uh, these on the premieres. Okay, so is the outside knee protection flap removable? No, that is definitely sewn in there. Um, but I can remove this so that it just kind of makes it a little more flippy if I take this out. Right there. So it's like slightly more flippy. Otherwise, it just kind of like, like that. But otherwise, you probably want to keep that in there if I can get it back in. We'll go with that. All right. So now let's see here. Toe bridge is now stitched in instead of screwed. Let's take a look at the toe bridge. And this part I really wasn't uh, wasn't really that picky about. I usually get the nylon or the uh, not the nylon, but the HD foam here, and so that's what I went with again. Now on my on these yep I did the same so that's the uh, the tow bridge or the uh, the HD foam and so I went with the HD foam again you can see they've now added uh, this extra hole so let me see if they had that on the e flex twos because I don't remember them having that before nope so before on the e flex twos they only had these so if you want uh, to, to put it over a little bit to the side you can certainly do that um, but otherwise, it's the HD foam. It's the typical one. I think on my premieres, I actually had the uh, the more traditional one, but I kind of went back to this. It really doesn't matter to me, honestly. So I don't care one way or another. All right, what else we got? Do you prefer the gray super grip to the cream Nash? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, did I have the E-Flex ones? Yes, I did. I had those a while ago. And uh, they were beautiful, if I can say that. And then uh, also, they ended up making it into, I believe it was the AHL, if I remember correctly, because there was an emergency goalie situation. And so uh, some beer leaguer ended up getting called up, and suddenly my pads were in the AHL, so that was pretty funny. Um, I have, okay, so let's see here. Have I had everything since the P3s? Man, Mike, I think you might know my pads better than I do. Um, I've had the P3s. I had the P4s, I had the XLTs, I had the Premieres, I had the E-Flex 1s, E-Flex 2s, now the E-Flex 3s, uh, so I think you're right. Um, I also had the Revokes, 
Um, and then I had the original premieres, the original P1s. And then I had the 590s before that. And uh, the 560s before that. The only ones I didn't have were the 590s, or the, uh, the 580s. I didn't have the 570s. And then the P2s I didn't have. So, so yeah. And yes, Kane Van Gate is a beast. He's a good guy. Uh, in fact, we have been talking about doing a little bit of a, um, a co-live stream at some point because he has some skates that are pretty cool that I haven't used, and he was, uh, he's more than willing to, uh, to let me use them. Um, but, uh, but I just haven't done that yet. So, um, okay. So again, I want to keep these to, uh, to CCM eFlex 3's questions. So if you have any more questions about the eFlex 3's, I'm more than happy to answer those. Is the bottom of the inner thigh protection by the boot shorter than the eFlex 2's? All right, so let's think about that one for a second. The inner thigh protection by the boot shorter than in the eFlex 2's. So I think you're talking about this section right here, right? So let's compare. And let me take the opposite one so I can put them next to each other. All right, so let's see if I can if I can get them kind of side by side so that you guys can see. All right. And then up. It's, it's difficult to put them side by side, especially because they're two different sizes. But it looks like no. It looks like they're the same. They look very similar to me, so I'm pretty sure they're the same. Now, if I put them side by side, sizing-wise, yeah, you can tell there's a difference. So let me let me put them side by side, and then I'll kind of show you. There we go. So like I said before, I had uh, 35 plus twos. Those are these right here. And now I'm going with 35 plus one, which are these right here. And you can see that's about an inch difference. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Not a problem, JK. So, all right. You should go twos on the left side in a game and threes on the right. That would be hilarious, and I am totally going to do that for you guys. As you guys know, like, I love to do, like, weird things, so I'm totally fine with that. So, like, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, make sure you check out my video where I use two gloves in a game. I want to do that again so badly. So... Um, I've been looking for a, uh, a full right glove that will match like any of the other sets that I have either of the sets that I have um, and because uh, I I feel like if you're gonna do it right like they should both be like the same kind of glove so that you don't have a different feel for both hands so uh, so yeah I would love to do uh, a game like that I'll do that sometime like I'll match uh, you know I'll have like different pads on my legs and then I'll have like maybe the uh, the the e flex three glove with the uh, the e flex two blocker or something like that that'd be pretty funny but then like what would I do for a mask I guess I can use my all white because I don't I don't have like a half blue and half half uh, red mask so uh, how do I remove the boot buckle so I'll I'll kind of show you that real quick so you have I don't know how I'm going to be able to show you this. I'll try to put my leg up here. So you have this section right here. And basically what you do is you feed this out because it's just right there. That's where the connection point is. So you just kind of feed this out after undoing this, of course. And then it's the same thing on this side where you end up, uh, you actually feed it out this way. So you have to take up the buckle on that side that kind of hurt but you take up the buckle on that side and kind of take this out a little bit and then you feed it through here so it ends up removing it quite nicely so it's not that difficult I really don't want to like outright remove it because I want to try it with it first just kind of compare my experiences and I can start removing stuff and going with it um, I went with red instead of blue this time because I need a red set too as you can see back there I have red sticks and blue sticks and so I I often play for uh, uh, for red teams 
and oddly enough I don't play for a blue team anymore so originally I had gotten those pads not only because they obviously um, are the the Glory Crease Network colors um, but also because because uh, uh, I was playing on a team that uh, they had those colors so it just kind of worked out nicely um, do two blockers and two sticks that would be funny I don't know how that would work so all right cool and I am definitely going to do follow-ups um, on these in fact I'd probably like to talk about these pads like with every live stream that I do for uh, for a long time and uh, and go from there so so cool all right we are at exactly an hour so I think that's probably a good time to, to get going it's like 11 o'clock at night here so thank you all so much for uh, for coming and checking out the uh, the new CCM extreme flex 3 pads uh, in my review and in my updates I will have much more information for, for you guys um, and I really can't wait to get these out on uh, out on the ice so hopefully I'll be able to get these out on the ice uh, this week and I got a couple more game videos uh, to put up for you guys with uh, the eFlex 2's um, but then you guys will start seeing some uh, eFlex 3 pads and we'll go from there so uh, thank you all so much for coming we had uh, well over a hundred people uh, on this live stream which is awesome so um, make sure to like comment and subscribe if you have goalie friends who are not subscribed to this channel make sure they are we want to get to 10,000 because uh, once I get to 10,000 I get to do some cool stuff with YouTube so uh, so I'll be fun so make sure to like comment subscribe and share that's the uh, the other important part so all of you guys have a wonderful night good luck and as always I will see you out on the ice so have a great one